Hello to you. My name is Jesse R. Johnson. I'll be speaking to you today about permanent magnets, how to construct an old, that's A-L-L, -L, an old permanent magnet working motor or engine. A permanent magnet motor or engine can be used for many things. This system I'll illustrate for you is to produce torque or turning force for many things. The one that will be illustrated and explained here uses three basic permanent magnet principles. Now all illustrations are purposely kept simple. Illustration number one. To turn, to pull, pardon me, to pull two magnets face off each other takes 100% the total force to do so as shown by the arrows. Both magnets are north-south, so they are attracting and they are being pulled face off apart, which takes 100% of the total force to do so. Illustration number two. To, to slide two magnets off of each other takes 25% of the total force to do so, as shown by the arrows here. They are being slid apart, and they are south and north, so they are attracting. Illustration number three. When two highly rectangular magnets, rectangular magnets, such as this, are turned 90 degrees to each other, they are turned 90 degrees to each other, and centered, and their surfaces are touching or extremely near touching, such as one one hundredth of an inch apart or one mil apart, their attractive and repulsive field forces become balanced, such as this in the, in the, in the, middle, in the center here such as this in the center, with attraction and attraction, attraction and attraction in yellow, and repulsion and repulsion here in red, such as that, with virtually no force needed, with virtually no force needed to pull them apart. In such a case, rotating them 90 degrees to each other is equal to sliding them apart. The, the simple motor that I'll explain here uses these three principles along with the principle of force multiplying, which is used in gear trains inside of car engines, or such as, a, as using a long lever to pick up a very heavy object a short distance. Now, to begin, this is the torque drive magnets the torque drive magnets. Two and three, two and three are the magnets. Number two, number three are the magnets which are attracting each other with great force by using south-north or north-south together. North and south. Starting from position A, here's posi position A right here. Number two is the stationary magnet. Number two is the stationary magnet. And number three is the moving magnet. Number three is the moving magnet. Number one is the casing which protects the magnets. Number one is the casings which protects the magnets. And both magnets have casings. Magnet number three moves in the direction of the green arrow under it. Here's the green arrow under it. And as three moves forward from position A, from position A, number five, number five is here, and that's the arm torque gears, the arm torque gears, number five, arm torque gears, which are gears, which are gears 360 degrees around arm six. Here's arm six, and these these gears are 360 degrees all the way around them. Number six here, the arm. Now, which turns when this goes, when number five goes, when number three goes forward this way, number five goes forward that way, and it turns number 16, number 16 right here, which is the ratchet gear, counterclockwise. Now, as number 16 turns, number 15, which is the drive rod, number 15 is here, the drive rod is turned with it as number 3, which is, number, is the magnet, 
goes forward, number seven. Number seven is right here. Number seven, right here. Number seven, which is the 90 degree producing gears. This number seven slides across number 14. It slides forward over number 14. Here's number 14 right here. Number 14 is the turn gear plate. The turn gear plate. And it slides this way over it. And the forward, the forward force, the forward force turns number 12. Number 12 is right here. While this is going forward, it turns number 12 right here, which is the reverse rack gear. The reverse rack gear via number 11. Via number 11. Number 11 is here. And when this piece here slides across number 12, it turns number 12. Reverse rack gear and number 11, number 11 is the reverse rack, the reverse rack, number 11. And number 12, the reverse rack gear, number 12 here, tightens. It tightens because of a wound spring around it. This is not shown, not shown, and this makes it ready to unwind. Number 9, number 9 is right here is the holding frame. This is the holding frame, holding frame, and number four, number four is right here, which is the place stabilizer, holds number three, number three, holds number three, the torque drive total system, total system in place to go back and forward smoothly. The total system holds this total system in place to go back and forth smoothly. Smoothly. Now, when number two and three are at B, here's B, under full attraction, but their surfaces are not in physical contact, but are one, are one one hundredth of an inch apart or one mil apart from each other, number 14, number 14 here, which is the turn gear plate, moves linearly. Linearly out of the page, number 14 here moves linearly, linearly, linearly out of the page under number 7, under number 7 here, which is the 90 degree producing gear and turns number 3 to a 90 degree, a 90 degree orientation to number 2. Numbers, numbers 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 10, 11 are a single unit piece. Now, for, now to show you, show you illustration B. Illustration B here. Now, when number 3, number 3 here, turns 90 degrees, it looks like this after having been turned counterclockwise. Having been turned counterclockwise, it looks like this. Also, the magnet surfaces do not touch once again. And this is what it looks like when the magnet when magnet three turns 90 degrees, and it looks like this. And it is one one hundredth of an inch apart, as you can see here. Turn 90 degrees to magnet two. Hold on, please. Hold on, please. This here is illustration D. D, not C, but D. And to get number 14, number 14 to turn number 7, a number 18, a circle hoop gear, a circle hoop gear is turned by a small electric motor, number 21. Number 18 has a number 25, which is a long lever, a long lever, a long lever for multiplying force to its number 20, its hub gear. Now, I'm going to show you Illustration C. Illustration C. As number 18, number 18, which is the circle hoop gear, is turned by its 21 and its 22, 
which is the electric motor gear right here, the electric motor, electric motor gear, each number 14 right here, number 14, is held in place by a number 19, right here, held in place by a number 19, which is a 13's hold arm, a 13 holds arm, to an individual, held to an individual, number 13. And there are four number 13s right here, four number 13s and four number 19s. Hold arms, one, two, three, and four. These are the turn gear plate enforcers. The number 13 is the turn gear, the turn gear plate, the turn gear plate enforcer, of which four are shown. Now, we will go back to illustration A. Go back to illustration A, as you can see here. Now, once number three, once number three is turned 90 degrees, it is pulled back to position A, back to position A from position B by number 11, right here, using, when, using number 12, which was tightened by a spring. When this number 11 goes back, uh, pardon me, when number 12 unwinds, it pulls number 11 backwards this way, which pulls the whole of number 3 backwards this way, and pulls number 5 this way, but number 16 is a ratchet system that only ratchets, only ratchets when it is going forward, but does not ratchet when it is going back. Now, when number 3 is being turned 90 degrees to keep it, keep it from turning back to zero degrees under magnetic attraction a number 10 number 10 which is a 90 degree ratchet limb has horizontal gears on and along it is kept from turning backwards by a number 8 right here by the halt number 8 by a halt ratchet now please look please look at number 7 number 13 Number 13 here, and number 14 right here, and right here. Now, I'm going to go back to C, back to C. Now, to get number 14, number 14 here, to force number 7 to turn a slip gear, number 24 right here, a slip gear is positioned under each number 13, each number 13, to engage each 13 gears, to, to, engage, each, to engage each 13 gears, a number 23, number 23, which is the bottom gears, each of these bottom gears is under each one of their respective number 13s. At specific times, and one after another in specific sequences, they are turned by the slip gears. The, t the, the slip gears are turned by gears which are meshed with number 20, the hub gear. The slip gears are meshed with gears which are meshed with number 20, the hub gear. Now, we will go to illustration E. This here is illustration E. E as in Edward. Hold on, please. Hold on, please. While I set this up. E and I am going to move, move the camera backwards. Hold on, please, so you can see the whole system. There now. E. Now, this is a top view, a top view of a whole motor set of such a machine. 
This set is only, only an example. In this example, there are eight, eight, eight pairs of torque drive magnets. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pairs of torque drive magnets. Drawn in red, drawn in red is what the 18 circle hoop gears, the circle hoop gears drawn in red here, and super, and it's number 25, number 25, it's long lever, it's number 20, hub gear right here, it's number 25, long lever, and it's hub gear, number 20, looks like. Number 15 is the drive rod. Number 15 is the drive rod, which is, that as a, all of this is duplicated on both sides. They are both duplicated. They look exactly the same, but this has been simplified to get the point across. Simplified. Drive rod, the drive rod is coupled to, to anything that you want the torque, the torque to, to be used for. There's a 15 here. There's also a 15 here, not drawn, but it is there. And it is coupled to anything that requires torque. This is a whole motor. Now, I'm going to go to illustration F. Hold on, please. Illustration F. Illustration F. Illustration F. This is a side view of the same whole motor set showing their parts, orientations to each other, and their functions in relation to each other. If you notice the numbers, yes, if you notice the numbers here, what each thing represents. I want to thank everyone for watching and listening and have a very good day.